So I'm going to show you what you get for $72 at Walmart. Let's go. There are some other stretches on here, like zigzag type things. Oops, I guess that doesn't want me to go backwards. I've got to go forwards. Um, so this is actually a blind hem stitch. I can show you how that works. This is another type of zigzag. It um, is a three-step zigzag. So look at this. This is the zigzag. This actually has two stitches per thing. And the stretch is a lot more like as much as if it was didn't even have thread in there. Like see how that is limited before it starts pulling. It still stretches more than that um, without breaking. But this one stretches a lot better. Let's see. We've got this little lightning bolt thing. It actually looks like a heartbeat. This one is a stretch one too. Let's let's do it down here so you can see the stretchiness of it. And voila, our heartbeat gives us a nice stitch too. That was the heartbeat stitch, stretchy. I think I like these better. You could even do like this for a decorative stitch. Now, on to the blind hem number 12. This is going to be hard to visualize. So pretend. Let's just pretend that this is a skirt. What you want to do, there's a little ridge on your foot and a little ridge here. The needle, I don't know if you can see it, but it's off to that side. It is going to put straight stitches on this. We want it on this one single layer. This one that's folded, it's going to come over and just grab a piece of it, grab a piece of it, and grab a piece of it. I'll show you how this works. Okay. So, kind of looks like the heartbeat again, but here's the magic. So this is the edge of my fabric, and this is my garment. Now, and of course, if you do it in the same color too, then it won't be as noticeable either. So there is your blind hem. It looks cooler than just, you know, straight hem. If you ironed this, it would be it would be a lot better. It would look a lot better. Okay, one thing that we have to show you is how to change the thread in there. So this slides back. And you pop this little sucker out of there. And then you put this one in. And you need to make sure that the thread is coming out this way. There's a little diagram here. Shows you. This gets set down in there. There's a hook that it has to be hooked on in there. Make sure it hooks on that hook. And it comes around out here. That's a thread cutter. That works too. That is actually really cool. There's a little thread cutter on there. We're going to test this quilting thing out. So we got the back, got batting in there got this top layer we're going to stitch it across this way to see how much bunching happens whoa something not right with the way mama's put in the bobbin yep muy problemo mayday 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 help send help if you get your machine stuck, do not just tug and pull and tug and pull hard. See if you can cut those threads out. Whoa. Muy problemo. Ah. Okay. We did something wrong, y'all. Thread says come this way. Okay, come this way this way so it needs to come out like that let's see if we did it right this time where's our problem there's our problem didn't even go through it all all right let's see did i ruin the machine for forever no yay i didn't ruin it forever and ever i'm in okay that's at the top pull this out 
that up, pull it out. Look at that, nice stitches. See if it will actually quilt and how much bunching we have. This is about eight inches. So, let's see what happens. It does it just fine though, but a walking foot will be better. And I'll show you why in just a second. Right there, see that? That puckered over the line and so it's just a tad off, but not bad. So for eight inches, it's just a tad off right there. So yes, it does do quilting. It'd be better if you have a walking foot. Um, you might be able to get a generic attachment for that and that would help. Make sure you put the bobbin in going the right way, but if you don't, don't pull and tug and yank and pull. Be very nice. See if you can get those threads a little loose and then snip them. There was other machines there. They were $134 and I thought, oh, well it's got some nice things. No, don't waste your money. Buy the $72 one. It does everything that you need, especially as a beginner. It does it all, as you saw. It does it all. Don't buy the other expensive one. Don't buy it for your kids. Just because you spend more money does not mean two things. It does not mean that they will have better success. It does not mean that they will stick with it longer. It just means that you'll waste more money. If they love it, then this is still a good machine and you can upgrade as you go along. So, do I recommend this? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. In fact, I'm going to show show, 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 show. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sew some projects with this. I'm creating tutorials for how to create your own patterns because we're not all the same size. I'm going to show you how to do a bunch of different patterns, how to do some embellishments to those patterns. I am super excited about it and I'm going to do it all with this machine so that it gives you confidence that you can do it. Alright, so if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, well, like, Click the thing. I mean, what are you, what are you waiting for? <laughs> click it, please. Click subscribe. Anyway, enough of that. Back to my normal calm self. I have a website, thebluekeystone.com. Check it out. Check out the stress. Check out other stuff that I'm sewing. And yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I, I think buy this machine. It's worth it. Bye.